Hello, my name is Dr. Konstantin Schimmert and this is my conversation with Ronald Sanford. A man who is incarcerated since 33 years in an United States high security prison in a single cell for a crime he committed when he was a child. He was 13 years old. So in our last episode, we saw that Ronald started to send me some material and it's more like, a, I would say, um, autobiographic material. He, uh, he writes about um, his first experiences, his first memories as a child. And I will not read that now because I first would like to catch up with the letters uh, we sent back and forward. And it's also because um, he's, the, the process is still ongoing. Uh, Ronald, is, Ronald is a little bit cautious because um, he is afraid that something get lost. And I so and so he's sending um, the material piece by piece. So always 10, 20 pages. And then um, he's waiting me to copy it and send it back. And this is also very, yeah, interesting. We wouldn't think about that. But, you know, he's even not able to have access to a simple copy machine. So, uh, and he's, uh, that's just the only material he has. And, and imagine that he's sitting in this little single cell and he has nothing he has nothing, no, no um, power at all in the world. So if he sent something out in the world, it might be lost for him. So this is the reason why he is very careful and I understand this absolutely. And so um, I would like to wait until I have all the materials because I would like to bring them into order and then I would like to ask him questions about things that are maybe missing or would would be would be interesting to complete the story and then later i will slowly start reading this material also um, but for the moment let's go on with the conversation with the letters back and forward and uh, later on i will somehow do it parallelly from time to time i will read some letters and from time to time i will read um out of the autobiographic memories of Ronald Sanford, a.k.a. Ariel. So, my next letter was from October 21st. Dear Ariel, your snail mail letter has arrived. So, if you have posted it on October 4th, it took two and a half weeks. Not super fast, but at least it works. I will soon start with the channel. It will be named Across the Pond. I like this picture you created in your first letter. There will be a section on my webpage Across the Pond where I will publish our conversation. Additionally, we have created a YouTube channel with that name. My idea is to read from your letters and our letters and comment on them. I will keep you updated. All the best to you, Constantine. Then I sent a second letter on October 22nd, 2021. Hi Ariel, just thinking about sending you one to two box via Amazon. Have you ever read Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now and Byron Katie, Loving What Is? If no, I would try to send them. All the best, Constantine. So then an answer from Ronald from October 24th, 2021. Hello, thanks for the reply and the news of the arrival of the material. What I sent wasn't what you actually requested. However, I have that information back in my possession now and will post it before the work expires. The week expires or the work, I'm not sure it is a WK. I had someone reading the writings. These are the only copies I have of these papers, so I would like you to copy them and forward me a set, please. I haven't read either of those books, but I have thumbed through Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now, in the past. If you send them, I will read them, promise. Had a visit with my mother yesterday for the first time in an extended period of time. Although it was non-contact and we weren't able to share food, seeing her was all that mattered. 
Ariel. How good that he can see his mother now. That was really important, I would say. So, another letter from Ronald from October 31st. Received the books in the post Friday night. Thank you. Isn't it nice that at least that works? So, an Amazon book arrives there. That's really nice. I am going to post some more stuff to you in a couple of days. I will notify. I would like copies of the material I sent if I haven't mentioned this previously. Had a visit with my mother last Saturday, first time since the pandemic began. Wasn't able to have any contact. But we were able to converse for the duration of the time. Sad to see her go. Looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, this is very touching. Um, I just I just think about my my mother already yeah passed away some years ago but I, I had but I had her a lot and I really can feel this in my heart um, this close connection to a mother and even more for somebody who is in a situation like uh, um, Ariel is this really really absolutely extreme and inhuman inhuman situation he is living it. And then there is this one person, and uh, what what touches me also is that that that, that, that these are non-contact visits. I mean, we know it of from from the movies, these glass we are sitting behind the glass. But if I would imagine this uh, not as a one-time situation, but as a as a normal situation since decades, the only contact to the outer world. Through a, through a piece of glass, the contact with the mother. That's really hard. On the other side, I understand from this writing that there seemed to have been in the past situation where they could even also touch them or give them a hug or share food. And so it's at least something that's, that's, that's really better. I hope this will come back for you, Ronald. I really hope. Um, so then there is my letter from um, November 3rd dear Ariel good to hear that your mother visited you how is it decided whether you may have contact or not is it about the pandemic or other reasons I guess it is a privilege to have contact and not a right great that the books arrived what else may be sent to you? Any other goods? Are you allowed to have a real computer or notebook or pad? I will do copies of your papers. We'll send them back to you. All the best, Constantine. Yeah, I'm asking this question very consciously about this. Is it a privilege or is it a right? Um, because I've, I've been watching a little bit these TV shows about um, prisons in the United States and I saw this distinction between privilege and right and it seemed to be a, like a kind of tool for the for the um, um, guards in the in the prison um, on and for the staff in the prison somehow to regulate um, the behavior of of the of the inmates to give them certain things only as a privilege so this means you have to earn this privilege and there are other things that are a right because maybe they are a right by law so i would say there i'm sure there's a right to, to get some food to be fed but it is seem to be a privilege that you um, get out of your cage or you get you get um, you have are allowed to have have a visit from outside and i really really don't like this approach at all because I, I would say we really would have to look into what are human rights and um, I would say somehow it seems to me that what are rights there are like animal rights I would consider that as animal rights and not as human rights and um, but I'm I'm not in the position to 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 change the the system and even more in a state where I don't, I'm not a citizen. So 
But on the other side, we are humans. We all are humans and that there is a human community and we can discuss it and we can talk about it. This is our right and this is our duty. Um, so, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting this channel by following the channel, by hitting the bell, by hitting the thumbs up. Citizenship. By signing that petition you find below in the link. And bye-bye and take care.